I'm back at another airport, Heathrow this time. So I got into Hong Kong, uh, there's a couple of withdrawals, so I made it in on Sunday. I got back from Singapore Saturday, but I had to come back anyway because I had Dutch League on the Wednesday last night. I landed in Gatwick this morning, had a few hours at home, and now I'm heading to Hong Kong. Direct flight for 12 hours, so not as long as Singapore, so it should be good. I'll see you out there. So I've just bumped into Charlie and Jazz at the airport. It happens to be on the same flight. How are you two? Yeah, how are you two looking forward to this flight then? Um, I'm not looking forward to it at all. No. It's a long flight. It's one of the longer ones, isn't it? Tough time, tough time change ahead, but yeah. um, we'll make the most of it and try and get the three points. And hopefully, you can get on the business class today, yeah. Hopefully, I can. You know, yeah, you always got to look out for those opportunities and uh, yeah. and brothers. All right, and brothers. <laughs> arrived in Hong Kong. Unfortunately there was no tournament pickup so we had to take our own taxis to the tournament venue. Here's the hotel room we're staying in. On the left there is the bathroom. Farkas is having a shower. As you can see we've both got a single bed each and then we have all our kit on the floor. We have a TV, but it's pretty small to be honest, which is quite annoying. The windows don't even open either, so yeah. Just landed and got to the hotel here with Farkas, staying with Farkas for the week. Uh, we're just about to get an Uber to the club to have a little practice and shake out the legs. Have they been the Uber? Yeah, for 20 minutes now. All right, quick tour of the Hong Kong Squash Center. I think this is their national center where they train. Uh, it's ne right next to the road, it's really busy streets as you can see there. Uh, at this club they've got like at least 18 courts, I think maybe more. They've got like two levels of courts. Here's the main exhibition show court where they play some of the second rounds and third rounds. And then they also have another glass court later on for the tournament for the semis and finals. And then here, me and Farkas are walking down the hallway towards the court we're practicing on and that we're playing on. This is the downstairs part. And then if you come upstairs here, this is the next part. There's the balcony view for the courts below. And then if you come over here, there's four or five courts. That's seven, I'm on court nine for the match, which is this one on the right here, where Farkas is standing. Me and Farkas just having a practice hit today. Uh, we did a few drills at the start, a bit similar to what I did in Singapore with the Boson drives and a few drives with some lobs and stuff. And then we decided to go into some full court kind of games just to get our movement sharp and get used to the court. I think one thing that's really important when you're going to these tournaments is finding out the court conditions and really getting used to them. Everywhere you play is always different. I think for a lot of amateur and club players, they never tend to adapt their game style or tactics to the court conditions. Obviously you have to play to different tactics to your opponent and how they play, but a lot of the time court conditions can play a massive factor in how you're going to approach the match. These courts here, they're heavily aircon, so they can be quite dead. Back wall can be quite dead as it hits the side wall at the back, so the ball might stop a little bit, so it really rewards good cross court length and height and width. And then also the ball stays really low on this court, so just getting used to those kind of extremities of the court and finding out what works and then what doesn't. So yeah, we just carried on playing a few rallies here, just just testing it out, and then finished up with some drop shots at the end, just to get some accuracy going to the front of the court.
with Farkas. Uh, we just finished our practice hit. How did you feel about it? I think it was much better than yesterday. Yeah. I think we both move a little bit better than yesterday. Yeah. So we're getting better from day to day and yeah. we are waiting the first match. Yeah, so yeah, another good session and then probably chill out for the rest of the day and we're going to go shopping and get some food. And there's a nice dragon there. Just got to the shopping mall. It's really, really big. And they like their Christmas here. Here's a little snippet of some of the food we had the other night for dinner. Morning everyone, it's day three here in Hong Kong. Uh, had a practice hit yesterday again with Farkas. A uh, similar sort of session style to the day before. I didn't film too much yesterday, I just wanted to focus on my practice and watch the final of the Hong Kong Football Club tournament. And then today I'm going to have another hit at about two with Faraz Khan. And then we have another welcome dinner for the players at 6pm at the Hong Kong Football Club. And then we, uh, after that, there'll be like some sort of dinner and then we'll kind of head to bed, get ready for my match tomorrow because I'm playing Ica Pajares from Spain at 12. So that's the first match on of the day. I'll be on court seven. Uh, it will be live streamed on the back court. So I'll uh, get some footage of the match and let you know how I get on. So I managed to find a gym in the hotel. So I'm going to do some stretching and activation work. I'll I'll kind of show you what I get up to in the mornings before like, I practice. So here is a typical warm-up routine I would do in the morning just to get my body activated and stuff. I start with some shoulder rotations into some external rotations just for the shoulder area. I've had a little problem over the couple of years, last couple of years so I just keep their shoulders healthy, taking them through different ranges of motion because swinging a squash racket is really really repetitive so you need to look after your shoulders this one's just stretching out the lower back the ql just to mobilize it a little bit get it warmed up and then i do like to roll out i kind of click the back to start it feels really nice and then i uh spend probably like five minutes mobilizing the thoracic part of the spine this is like the mid part of the spine where for me it gets quite stiff and with the squash movements where there's lots of twisting and bending and stuff to keep this bit mobile and healthy is really important. And then again, I'm just uh, going over the QL part of the lower back, just so it's not getting too tight. I can get some knots in there, so it's important to stay on top of it. And then I go into some kind of like, almost like dynamic stretching. So I'm going into a hamstring stretch into uh, a reach through for the hip flexor. You're basically taking your legs and body for a kind of full range of motion and these are kind of similar positions you'll get into within a game sometimes your leg can be outstretched in front or sometimes you can be in a deep lunge like this so just getting the hips and hamstrings mobile in one here and now this is my favorite stretch of them all it's a wide lunge with a thoracic twist through this is the best way to open up your mid back and make sure you increase the mobility there uh, this also like helps to keep the lower back free because if your mid back is tight and stiff then your lower back gets tight and sore and that's what causes problems why people normally have low back issues <clears throat> and then this one is a lunge reach through so you're holding like a static lunge position I call it a lunge hold reaching through and then spreading yourself up opening up that back hip flexor and just getting some stability into a lunge again it's important for balance, especially when you're in those extended positions on the court. Uh, I think it's super vital that you incorporate this probably, I would say, every day into your routine. I do this as part of my warm up and stretching throughout the day. And then we've got the Cossack side squat. I do this one every day as well. 
great way to get the adductors, the inner part of the leg, uh, strong but also mobile. You can get a nice wide position and just keep switching between the two. And then you can also hold this position, it's called a horse stance, just gets the adductors working. This is like a two in one, you're going adductors and lower back. And then this one's for the ankles. Just trying to increase a little bit of range of motion in there. Try and get your knee as far over toe as possible without your heel coming off the ground. <clears throat> and then here we have a hamstring reached to, you pull yourself into a squat and then you reach up, open up their shoulders and back. It's actually pretty tough. Try and touch your toes, pull yourself down. This just opens up your hips, back, ankles, everything really. So I'm just having a practice with Faraz today before the first round. How are you finding the course? Um, yeah, they're really, really fast. So I'm uh, going to have to uh, drink a lot of caffeine before hopping on court tomorrow, that's for sure. And that coconut water, <laughs> this, yeah. this is going to help out, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Might need, might need a few of these, though. Alright, good luck tomorrow. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for the, thanks for Dinner with Farkash the evening before the match. And just like that, it's game day. Uh, so just woken up around 8.30. Had some breakfast at 8.45. Just been to the gym for a little 15 minute stretch out. Activation work. And then I'll head to the club at 10.30. Start getting warm around 11.15. And then yeah, my match is at 12. So first one of the day against Ika. So yeah, I'll let you know how we get on. Just got back from the match against Ika. Fortunately, I lost three love. It's like 11 7, 11 9, 11 8. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I'm really pissed off with the performance. It was nowhere near what I'm capable of, nowhere near my best. I didn't adjust my tactics enough throughout the match, I let him dictate too much of the pace. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really annoyed about that. You come all this way to Hong Kong again, and then perform like that is quite disheartening. Especially when I've been playing quite well recently, to have a performance like that, it's just it's a bit demoralising. All I want to do now is go home and just get out of this place, but I'll have a look at the flights and see what there is. Yeah, it's annoying because I felt like I could have really got into this guy and I felt like I could win. But I, I, I didn't move particularly great today, my legs felt a little bit heavy. I'm not sure if that's because of all the flights, I don't know, but... I've got to work out what that problem is there. Uh, he played tactically pretty well today. I didn't I didn't capitalise enough on, on what he was doing, but when I did it went really well, but then there'll be there was too many patches within the match where he was on top of me and I, I didn't find solutions quick enough, so that's the way it goes. Uh, yeah. Sorry there wasn't much content this week when you lose first round like that. It's been quite full on the last six weeks for me, so 
need time need some time to recoup a little bit and yeah get ready for the next part of the season So like I said, that is the end of the vlog. Uh, Hong Kong Squash Open 2023. That is also my last tournament of 2023. So I'm now going to play Italian league this weekend. And then that is it for the year. I'll be taking some, some days off and then in the new year, I'll be having a three or four week training block before the new year, potentially Florida gold and then tournament champions. So no more vlogs for a while, but we're going to be doing some different style of content over the Christmas period. So stay tuned and keep an eye out. Thanks guys.